and welcome everybody to the 2017 Ledgestone Insurance Open presented by Discraft. You got a pair of Nates on the commentary today, myself, Nate Sexton, and our tournament director, Nate Heinold. Say hi, Nate. What's up, Nate Sexton? Hey, man. And we got the chase card today for the final round. Should be pr pretty exciting golf. We got these guys trying to charge back into this thing, see if they can make a run at the leaders. Obviously, Josh playing out of his mind, but you never know what could happen on this course. Absolutely. Hole one. Yeah, hole one. 633 feet across the water. One of the toughest starting holes you're ever going to see. If you go in the water off the tee, you move up to a drop zone. Otherwise, you just play normal OB rules or hopefully you're safe inbounds on that hillside. Yeah, and this is, as you said, such a challenging opening hole. It just makes you nervous right away. You just want to get it inbounds. Very, very nervous. Yeah, especially if you get a headwind or any kind of, I mean, I know this can be a very windy place sometimes, and this is one of the toughest holes on an otherwise very tough course. So you know that these guys are really hoping to get this inbounds. Cameron looks a little bit high with the drive. And that's <laughs> safe. It is safe. So that's great. I mean, that's just an absolutely fine spot to be. Inches from disaster, but he'll be really happy with that. You really can't. I mean, he's probably only 200 feet from the basket. That was a hyper-aggressive line there. Absolutely. Almost no room for error if you go that close. We've got three-time world champion Nate Doss coming up next. I'm sure Nate's throwing his Z-Force there. Yeah, I would think so. Fast disc. Just get it over the water and let it hyzer back. This looks like a pretty ideal drive. Yep, that's a great shot. It's kind of on the hillside, so a tough stance. But you know what? These players don't complain about being in bounds on this hole at all. This hole actually yeah. This hole actually played the easiest it's played all week this round. It was supposed to rain. It didn't really rain for them. The winds were a little bit down. And we cut the 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 worst thirty players, and so the averages were a little lower. But um, this okay. hole played, you know, easier. All right, we got James Snappy Cole. He's got a big arm. Looks like he's put it even a little uphill from where Nate landed, so that'll make it even a little easier on that approach shot. And then we've got KJ Naibo, the eleven-time Danish champion, making his Ledgestone debut. I gotta think, right? Yeah, you know, he's been here, he was here, man, he was here the Wednesday, before the Wednesday of the event. So he was here 10 days before the event and uh, just taking notes, practicing the course. And his preparation really paid off because he really, he knew what to do on every shot. Yeah, he's a, he's a notorious. He's probably the, the most uh, intensive prep guy out there on the tour. When he decides to play an event, he's going to show up plenty early. He's going to get lots of practice in and really, and he does really like to take paper written notes and know exactly what he's going to do to attack each hole. Nate, a little bit fast over the hill. I'm going to think that stayed safe in bounds. Yeah, that, that bush is really thick. He probably doesn't have a clean putt, um, but yeah, he probably is in bounds. Yeah. KJ looks like he's controlled the speed a little better. And that should be a pretty makeable shot inside the circle. And you can see after these drives, these guys are just throwing putter up shots. That's just how, I mean, those four drives were just really awesome. Yeah, you're right about that. Oh, fantastic. Everybody got a hold of a big distance driver and put it on a good line. You're almost always going to see somebody flip one over or saw one off and end up in the water. Yeah. If, uh... Him with a little bit long, but he's going to have a, Doable putt, but not quite where he wanted to land that, I'm sure. Yeah, this hole actually had McBeth's number the entire week. He just couldn't stay out of the water. He was taking an aggressive line. And, and this hole, really, you just need to turn it over. Yeah, a little bit. But they've been an overstable disc that'll come back. So we saw Nate pitch out and Cam just miss. KJ for a birdie three. And he makes good. Nice putt. KJ was so nice all week. He, He's a, just a class act. Yeah, he absolutely is. Snappy makes birdie. And we'll see a couple of pars for Cam. But like Nate said, I mean, really a pretty fantastic start. These guys made this hole look a lot easier than it actually is.
two birdies, two pars, and we got a tight grouping, four, two 14 down. So these guys came into the round all tied. Yeah, they were all tied for fifth, actually. Um, That's kind of cool. It was cool. And, and yeah, hole two, Nate, this is actually a combination of holes two and three from last year. Yeah, I really like this change. I, I want to say I, I helped suggest this, but I could just be <laughs> inflating my own ego. I think, uh, but I think this is a good idea. I think a lot of people maybe suggested it. I had thought about it before and that we just didn't have enough room for holes. And so I needed two holes here and I figured something yeah. out and we made it work. So, yeah, I like it. I think, uh, whoa, this needs to hurry. Yeah, that's going to float that's away, floating. I think. Yep. Yeah, that's floating. But I think it makes for an interesting hole. Big, uh, you need a pretty big tee shot, but a lot out of bounds. So you kind of have to control it and make it move to the right. And then you've got a kind of a technical approach to a green that... Is this basket really close to the water still? Like I'm, 15 feet or something? I moved it off. It's about 18 feet. Um, it's still a very right. challenging shot. The thing I like is, is I've seen sidearms. I've seen rollers. I've seen a sky lefty hyzer. I've seen the turnover. So it's just really great variety. That, that a lot in a lot of ways that makes a good hole interesting to watch interesting to play when you've got a lot of different you know you step up on the practice day and you're thinking well I could do this could do this could do this makes it kind of fun yep the roller here is really aggressive I've seen Ricky and other guys get way down there but this play is the safe play throwing like a buzz mid range or to the uh, and Nate just you know kisses the ropes Ooh, there touches the rope yeah probably didn't change his shot but still. Very close to the out of bounds. Looks like he's going to do a similar shot for the second. He probably is not going for the green there because he was well back, and you know he got it close enough though. So, yeah, he's pretty close. But yeah, you you certainly can't go long on this hole. This looks pretty high, but it's settling pretty soft. <laughs> I can tell. He looks he looks close. Yeah, tough to say whether that went inbounds. Cam needs to keep this turned over. Oh, oh, actually, good little reaction off the tree inside the circle. Yeah, that was a nice kick. Um, you know, this hole played a lot easier than it did yesterday. There is a gale force headwind yesterday, so this hole played as almost the hardest hole yesterday, and today it played as the seventh most difficult hole. 18% of the field birdied it, so it, it was playing easier than the day before. Nice. I like these stats. Wow, KJ almost connects. Any of these holes with a lot of OB, once you get a heavy wind, it can be nearly impossible. Great putt from Doss. That was really solid after. I mean, his drive was only maybe 280 feet from the tee, maybe even a little less. And so he really, I think he threw his TI buzz there both times. So that's a great birdie. Yeah, absolutely. Recovery from not an ideal drive. Ooh. Oh, that needs to sit down. And th see, there, that's that shows right there why I think it was a good change. You moving that a little bit away from the water. Yep. Because that putt is in the water every time last year. Yeah. And with a little more room, you can kind of afford to maybe miss a. You can take a look at making a putt from 35 feet and hopefully not go OB. Yeah, and that's exactly right. And, you know, we we try to listen to the players, and, and this was overwhelming. Even when we have Michael Johansson, who I've never heard a complain ever, he said that hole three last year played tricky. And so that was his way yeah. of saying <laughs> maybe that hole didn't play quite right. And so I think this hole played really well last year. Just a tough par four. Yeah, I like it. Two birdies, a par, and a bogey for KJ after going OB on the roller. Moving on to hole three, which is a kind of, you can pick your, your tunnel here. You can go backhand straight up the middle, or you can kind of take a forehand out over the out-of-bounds path and try to bring it back inbounds near the basket. Yeah, and Ricky took that forehand line the first three rounds, and I like that forehand line, and Ricky hit the first tree every time. Um, I wow. like that forehand line, but after watching what you know him do it, maybe I don't like it so much. <laughs> that's a that's a very surprising for somebody like Rick. I, I, I don't know what he threw the fourth round, but the odds are is that he would not throw OB again. I mean, the line is there. Yeah. You know, Ricky has a great forehand, but I do like the up the middle play. The problem is for a right hander, if you if you're turning the disc over and you hit a tree, it's probably going to kick left. Absolutely, you hit a tree on that right side, and it's pretty much gone unless you get a second lucky kick. And that's a good drive there. You 
if you if you turn it over, you know, get it on the right side of the green, you're gonna have a putt. Yeah, definitely. Edge of the circle look from there. Cam is a great tunnel thrower. And that's a great drive. And that's perfect, yeah. Just coming in just short of the OB, probably only 20 feet left. KJ almost certainly throwing a rock of some kind. It might need to get sneaky. And see, there's that. It looks like he just snuck OB. There was that kick. Mm. He had a little too much power there and a little too much Anheuser. Yep, yep, that just barely slides OB. See if he can make a big recovery. Ooh, just got a bit of the chains, but not quite enough to settle for the bogey. Relative to par, this hole actually played harder than a hole one relative to course par. So that's for today only. Um, wow. Very surprising. I think this hole is so short, but I think the OB is just challenging. And we did move the basket back about 20 feet from last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes you throw it a little harder, which just brings in those trees just that much more. And there's a good putt by uh, James Cole. Nate with his comebacker. And Cam with the best drive in the group here. Makes birdie. Beautiful. KJ cleans up for bogey. All right, two birdies, one par, one bogey. Take a quick commercial break, and we'll see you guys on the other side. Lifetime warranty and 1% back to the planet. Temper Craft USA. Temper your thirst. All right, hole four, 423 feet. This is a hole that sort of starts out flat but then goes sharply downhill. You can reach it with a mid range, uh, and then the basket is perched on this mound, which is pretty tricky for the putting. Also, down the entire right side, you got the OB path. So, this is a great birdie if you can get it. Yeah, this actually played incredibly difficult. Uh, played as the fourth most difficult hole for round four. Only 8% of the field birdied it, so playing very challenging. And this is the popular miss on the left side because you're just trying to yeah. avoid the right side OB. Yeah, and if that kicks left, it can get pretty ugly if you get into those woods and don't really have a good angle to get down onto that scary green. That also might fade a little left. Oh, no, he got it flipped. I mean, that's a great drive. Anything, you know, over there is, if you're putting here, yeah. you're in good shape, especially if you're not putting downhill. Yeah, absolutely. That's That looks to be Circle's Edge. He'll be really happy with that. I think that's Nate's patented green Z-Wasp. That's probably going to stable up a little bit, but he's going to be down there. Yeah, that's not bad. Just short. And if it takes a good early hit on those woods and doesn't go very far in, he may still have an opportunity to make birdie. I like that play with an overstable mid-range. I've seen a lot of players go left and take the Anheuser, and when if you get any turn over the hill, it's going to be out of bounds. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. I've had, I've kind of done a few things on this hole. I've actually even birdied this hole with a forehand roller before in the tournament. I, I do remember that. I did see somebody throw it, um, but they didn't do it like Nate Sexton. Yeah, it's a tricky play because you have to go out of bounds on purpose and just count on it to come back. Uh, but the backhand is is the best play if you can just control that mid-range perfectly and slide it up to the hill. KJ looks like he's got a way out. Beautifully done. Easy putt there. And that's snappy for his par, correct? Yes, yep. So a little bit of a tough hole for him. This is Nate for birdie. That's wow. Great birdie. That is good to see. Nate feeling, his putter's feeling good today. 
That is a scary putt, too. He's going downhill at an elevated basket, and OB is not exactly directly behind, but it's definitely in part of your thought process there. Yeah, and that's uh, not a good roll away. Once no, again, but it stayed in, right? Yeah, there's you have probably 25 feet of room, so there there's enough where if you do get a bad bounce, you're not going to go be save. great save. Yeah. Can't really complain about a par there. Good to give, get a run on the birdie, but it's going to roll most of the time if you miss this putt low. Snappy's going to end up taking a four, and KJ with a pretty routine three after pitching out of the woods perfectly. Now, I'm not sure the video does it justice, but this gallery today was just massive, and just thanks for all the support at the tournament. Oh, that's, that's great to hear. I mean... This tournament's getting bigger every year, I feel like, so hopefully that'll continue into the future and we'll get all the local people coming out and saying hi to the pros. Now this is a tough hole. We got I like the addition of the uh, boards behind the basket though. This one you have to clear the uh, baseball field, kind of hysering down. It's actually on the elevated position, right, for the uh, for the tournament. Correct, yep. Okay, so it's a big drive with a fast disc. And you just can't straighten it out too much, or you go OB, and again, you're going to go to a drop zone here on all OBs. Is that correct? On this hole, correct. Yeah, Nate's really... Oh, look at that. That green stake just saved him from going OB. Oh, <laughs> nice. But yes, drop zone has moved up a little bit this year. Still a challenging shot. I've seen a couple guys get it up and down. Um, very challenging. But this is a par 3 this year with the removal of stroke and distance, and we added a few feet to the back of the ropes... Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, no. Off the top of the fence. Another inch, and he's got it. Yeah, I like this as a par three. Total uh, par three distance is appropriate. I mean, you had an ace and an almost ace already in the tournament, if I'm, if I'm uh, correct, right? Yep, that's correct. That's amazing. I mean, this is a hole where it's, it's just a pure distance hole. You want to just put it on a big high as your tough lefty hole. But if you're a right-hander, just get it up in the air and get it out there far enough. Yeah, for sure. The thing you have to be careful of is flipping it over because then it just goes OB deep, kind of like where Nate's was headed. So you got to throw an overstable disc and just throw it hard. And you got to make sure to get on it enough because I, I did see Mr. Macbeth, I believe, go short three times here trying to be too aggressive. Wow. Probably trying to throw a... Uh, fairway driver. No, he was actually throwing Star Destroyer, so... Um, wow, on a, just trying to go for that ace. Well, just trying to get it too high in the air, maybe. Well, he was one for four, kind of, so with uh, with that, yeah, with that almost. third round uh, fun, so... Wow. That's a great shot by uh, Nate there. Yep. It's a tough putt to run, really, with a full commitment on the elevated basket from that kind of distance, so Snappy's going to be happy with that. If Cam can get one high enough, now nah, it might be a little bit windy. Not really worth the risk of uh, attacking that basket. I mean, even a 20-foot putt on an elevated basket is is not easy. Oh, wow. wow. What about a 45-foot putt? Jeez, KJ just dead center. That is awesome. Nice putt. And that's for two. That, Great job. That is a two. So Cam is going to take a... Five? Yeah, he went to the drop zone and didn't get up and down, yeah. so that'd be a five. So that'll be a little bit of a tough one to swallow, Take losing a few strokes to his card mates. All right, one of the longer holes at the course, one of the tougher ones too, at par four and almost 900 feet, with a lot of OB, especially around the green. This is a really, really difficult birdie because you have to throw really two distance shots and throwing a distance shot into a green that small is always pretty scary yeah again though the addition of the wall is really really good good choice i think and no stroke and distance you know so at least you can be a little more aggressive if you cross inbounds you can take it where it crossed very yes I mean, very challenging hole it actually played as the hardest um hole in the course three of the four rounds including this round it's really challenging to birdie i've i've seen it done a few times um, it would be a very soft par five, um, but right now yeah, it's just it's, a very hard par four. It's a very difficult four because, I mean, there's going to be players in the field that couldn't birdie this hole regardless of out of bounds. Just the fact that it's 900 feet and you got to get there in two shots. I mean, that's a that's a crush. 
yeah, I mean, there's, you know, throwing 450 is, you know, a lot of, a lot of distance, but doing it twice and that accurately within the ropes is incredibly challenging. Yeah, definitely you deserve your birdie if you can pull that off. So this first shot is a pretty low stress shot. It's just kind of about like how much you want to bite off, how flat can you get the disc and still trust it to come back in bounds. So these guys are playing it pretty safe, kind of setting up for that next shot to get a little bit longer, maybe. Yeah, the rope here, if you if you go out of bounds here, and when people ask, you know, why do you rope this course? Why do you do that? And the reason is, is because a lot of disc golf courses don't punish bad shots. So if you, yes. if you turn that disc over way to the right and you were 80 feet right of where that rope line is, you really don't, you deserve to be penalized. And so that's why, you know, I choose to rope this kind of course um, on certain holes because I think it's... Uh-oh, there's an errant shot. Yeah, that, the problem with that is, is I don't think he crossed anywhere. He, I mean, he crossed. Yeah, he's got to take it way back there. He crossed here he is again. way up here. Or is here. this a replay? I, think we're, I hope this is a replay. Yeah, I think we're seeing an instant replay here, so. Okay, good. Um, But uh, that crossed, he, he may move up 50 feet, maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, this hole has to be roped. You can't have, you couldn't have a hole like this in a professional tournament with no out of bounds. I think it just wouldn't be. I, it just wouldn't make a lot of sense. And look at that cam. Great. great. And then there you get a nice shot of the gallery that really, I mean, when we got to the end, it was five or six people deep. We had a ton of people out here. That's awesome. And KJ here, he's not even going for the green. He didn't quite get his drive far enough. He's just playing a placement shot, and that's a good shot. This, I mean, that's a smart play. Par is no problem here. See if Nate can play an aggressive shot here and kind of save this uh, his score from that first mistake. And that's a good-looking shot. You can tell, though, that he wasn't really playing aggressive. He, I mean, he's still 60 short. He did not want to risk. You know, yeah, you could take a huge number for sure. Because there, you're throwing over OB the entire time until you get back to the basket. Yes. That's a great shot. Got himself pretty close. Long birdie look from Cam. And KJ will have the same very long birdie look. KJ's got his good buddy Jonas on the back there. Jonas and KJ were traveling together out having fun in Peoria, and it was great to have them here all the way from Denmark. That's awesome. Oh, got a piece of it. Tickled the chains. That was a Man, if he could have gone back to back from way outside, that would be pretty amazing. Yep. That's sitting down pretty nice. So this is Nate, I believe, for double bogey. Yeah, he, he basically was stroking distance there in, in terms of his shot because he didn't really advance, so basically took a two-stroke. So he had four throws plus yep. that. So Easy par. Easy pars for the rest of the group, looks like. And you know what? On that hole, easy par is a good thing. Absolutely. That's a pretty well-played hole. Especially with any kind of unfavorable wind, you're really not going to be able to make an effort at birdie. Seven, 261 feet through these little trees. It's kind of another little straight tunnel and there's also a forehand line. It looks innocent enough, but I have seen some kicks OB into the, the stream on the left side. Yeah, and this hole actually, the players just shredded it today. I think finally they all, you know, A, they figured it out to do it even better than what they did the first three rounds and the cut helped the average, but this hole was birdied by 70% of the field actually today. Wow. Which was that's by far the highest of any of the four rounds. That makes sense. Yeah, that's good. So the trees must have been kind today. Tree, Not too many people kicking into the stream. The trees were kind. And uh, I think just you know, the fourth round here just got the best players you know, to the cut line. 
and they really just took care of business in this hole. And, and honestly, you have to. After playing five and six, and then having to go to the peninsula hole next, you have to bury yeah. this hole. Yeah, it's one kind of little respite from some really difficult holes, so you'd hope you can do it. We've got a follow flight here for Snappy, just absolutely parking the hole. Probably a putter of some kind. Yeah, it's 260, and just want to throw it right at the middle. I do like the forehand line, but these guys are just showing you how to do the putter. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, it bounces it right through. Yeah, this is not a heavy, uh, not a lot of forehand throwers in this group. I mean, they have good forehands, but these guys are backhand dominant players for sure. And psychologically, when I designed this course, my goal was to give them a couple holes like this that they can breathe. You know, I don't want to completely exhaust and intimidate them the entire time with hard punishing holes with yeah. a bunch of OB. Yeah, yeah, it's good to have. I mean, this is a different kind of test, a hole like this, where you it's like a must-get. There's a different kind of pressure with that than there is with a hole like hole six that's like a, you know, you're ecstatic if you convert it. you got to throw two perfect shots. Yep. This still demands a really nice straight shot, but it's kind of a different pressure to feel like, oh, boy, this is my chance. I need it, too. I need it, too. And I think this group just showed you how to star birdie this hole. Yeah, that's what you would hope from the second group, uh, final day of a big tournament like this. Clearly, all these guys are playing some of their better golf to be in this position to start with. So you got to figure they're going to be locked in and take advantage of, of a hole like that. Okay, hole eight, very difficult, par four. You start out with this shot through the gap over the Out of Bounds Creek, then you get anywhere out in this field, and then if you get far enough, you might be willing to kind of tempt uh, the risk of going out onto the end of this peninsula, but you've got really water on both sides, obviously much closer on the left. Looks like you moved the basket just a little bit back off the tip of that this year. Actually, from 2015 to 2016, I moved it up quite a bit, and for this year, I. It was probably in the same spot as last year, okay. um, but it was a lot different from 2015. Um, yeah. But this hole actually, it played as the uh, third most difficult hole, and there were nine people that birdied this hole out of the 132 that made the cut, and so certainly uh, you know, not an easy birdie at all. Very challenging, and that got a weird kick. Wow, That's, look at that. I, Inbounds. Wow, I've, I've honestly never seen somebody that far right. That was... You wouldn't think a right-handed backhand shot would be able to kick and cut that way, but it did. Wow. And that's a great drive by Cam. Yeah, that's pretty much ideal. Just pipe it through there, get up there and see how it looks to you to go at that green. I mean, you really need to be in a perfect position. This is another hole where, you know, par is just fine. And that's just a crush there. Yeah, wow. You got, even got the turnover on it through the gap. That'll really put him out there, probably 450-ish feet, and that takes makes that second shot a lot more doable. This, I'm sure, is just a layup. Yeah, and that... And it's not a was, good layup, really. That's going to be a little bit tricky, maybe. I would say it's... I don't know even if there's a line through there that's clean. Um, He definitely missed the line there, so... And Nate going Z-Wasp. This needs to drop. I think it needs to drop, yeah. he. Uh, oh, boy. Maybe should have gone, you know, T.I. Buzz there, but uh, I won't question three-time world champion. That's probably smart. I wouldn't do it either. <laughs> and that's a really good line there. If it just gets off this tree, that's putting. Oh, there's a putt there. Yeah, he'll have a putt. KJ's probably throwing a Heiser flip rock here, I assume. I would think so. Looks actually pretty good. Just needs to miss the just needs, branches just, a little bit. He's the hyzer. I mean, he's. it's really thick over there. Don't know what he has, but... I'm sure he'll, he'll take it. Oh, yeah. It's not too... As long as you're in bounds, I mean, this just needs to sit. That's got to sit. Yeah, that's... Oh, boy. When you throw a sidearm there like that, you, you, you cannot land it on the hillside. You have to land on the flat. Not that there's much to land it on there, but uh, tough shot. Yeah. Yeah, I find myself trying to miss that shot a little bit right and kind of take advantage of that rough. Just try not to go too deep in there. Yep, but. yep. Hard to say who putted that. Maybe KJ? Nope, not KJ. No, that was... Uh, had a 50-50 shot. That was Cam, I think. I think he was in the yeah, force right. there. KJ makes the birdie. 
That was, I mean, that's an incredible nice. birdie. And look at this guy behind Snappy here. Just dedication getting Nate's disc. He is knee deep in that mud. Yeah, definitely. Well, you, like you said, that's a, that disc Nate has had a long time. Oh, I'm yeah. sure he doesn't want to see that one go. No, Nate was, I'm sure Nate would have been in there if that guy wasn't doing it for him. Yeah, if, if nothing else, after the round, take a quick swim. Tough hole for Snappy there. Yeah, it was. I mean, honestly, his Six. his drive was out of place, and his uh, second shot wasn't the best, but uh, I'm sure he'll get it back here. Oh, he will for sure, but yeah, he was scrambling a little bit. All right, hole nine, the bridge hole. We're going off through the bridge on the drive between these nice discraft flags, and then you gotta make it out onto this island green. Basket is on the right edge. There's a pretty big landing zone left. If you really want to go directly at the pin, you're you're taking a risk, and you gotta, you know, that's what you gotta do to be parked for a birdie. And we did move the front wall about 12 feet closer, so the out of bounds line is not the wall. Um, and and this will actually play it a lot easier than it has in past years. I made the green a little bit bigger. That shot probably would not have been in bounds last year. That KJ yeah, just threw, yeah. and it is this year. And I just wanted that. I don't. I don't want to punish players i just want to punish bad shots yeah i like that I, I don't have a problem with this hole i think it's uh tough but fun good shot there by cam anything in bounds near the circle is a good shot here this hole is just a lot of fun i think for the fans i mean it's just a unique hole i don't know anywhere else where you're throwing on a bridge that's no longer used yeah yeah it's a unique looking hole for sure when you remember and this is the, the overwhelming play. You're going to try to put it out there 30 feet left because going straight for the pin is a little bit insane. Absolutely. And actually, this hole had favorable wind almost every round, and so the averages on this hole were, were very, um, were very you know, different compared to prior years. This yeah, one. sure. I mean, the, before with some different rules, I mean, this hole had... Put up some double-digit scores, I remember. Yeah, I know. There were some, some big numbers. So this is, that's good. I think these guys are all kind of where you're going to see people land. Take your putt at it. Ooh, sit down. Is that out of bounds? Yeah, I believe that went out of bounds. Ouch. The wall being moved there probably hurt KJ. It's my opinion that the OB wall should not be in bounds, and so... You know, Steve Dodge and I had a conversation about this, and I requested that mostly all of the OB walls be moved. And that and that's a good putt there by Nate for, for birdie. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I can kind of see both sides of that. Uh, you know, sometimes the the wall being in, the being the actual line can save some kind of bad shots. Um, but with a short wall like this, sometimes it, it can be okay. What you don't want is to create a situation where, like, Almost good shots barely go out of bounds, but worse shots hit the wall and bounce back in. But I think off of a short wall like this, that's not likely to happen. And the main reason I did it is because I didn't want disc crashing through the wall and then one disc not crash, you know, maybe yeah. maybe not crashing through and that being inconsistent. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks everyone for joining us, tuning in for this front nine from our final round chase card. We will be back with back nine coverage where there's gonna be a lot of water, a lot of OB, hopefully a lot of long putts and a lot of fun that that also